If you change your mind, you change your life, just change your mind. The Lord loves you. He's standing with his arms wide open. Cause this day's for you Don't you let this opportunity pass by you Yeah Change your mind Well, good morning What a wonderful lesson. I saw the lights waving. I want to go wave your hands in the air. But you got to take your... See, this, this is a wonderful segue into what we're getting ready to talk about. Because we, gotta, we have to learn how to deal with the unexpected. You never know. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You never know what could happen, but always remember what you know. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's what? Worthy to be praised. That's some stuff I still know. When things are less comfortable, there's still some things that I know. When the air ain't blazing like you used to be blazed, Lord, I praise you for the ability to wave this fan. It makes no sense to come all the way over here to the north side of Greenville and not have church. It makes no sense to go through what Monday brought, what Tuesday brought, what Wednesday brought, what Thursday brought, what Friday brought, and I get to my time of celebration. And I let something like this somebody tell the Lord I don't even care. The Holy Spirit is remarkable. I, Tina, I don't know if you're ready to put the slide up there, but as I was sitting there, I didn't bring my iPad and I normally bring my iPad with me just to serve as backup in case something goes down. If y'all were paying attention, I got up and walked out. Holy Spirit said, go get your iPad. I'm like, all right. Then come back and the lights go down. Are we ready? Because either whether, whether the screen ready I, or not, I am. Stay in the light. That's a sermon by itself. Stay. Somebody write that down for me. Stay in the light. Are we actually streaming? We are streaming. Ain't the Lord good? The devil thought he had me. But I got him. All right, here we go. First, I do want to thank you guys that in my absence on last week, y'all had a fantastic service. Shout out to our assistant pastor, uh, Jermaine Smith, and just for how you guys conduct. I told him he got a taste of what a pastor's like. He had to teach Sunday school. He had to make sure everybody was in place. Then has, had to preach and count money. And <laughs> it ain't all that it's cracked up to be, is it, Jay? We're coming out of the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. We're getting ready to step into a series that God gave me a few weeks ago and finally gave me permission to begin it. The series is called the Exit Series. I, I, I am a student of life. I'm a student of my own life. I'm a student of yours. And one of the things that I've noticed, and we've talked about, but now God wants us to play, pay close attention to, I, the pandemic has brought an end to a lot of things. And God began to place it on my heart. Teach my people how to handle envy. Y'all ready for this? 
I hear you, Maris. Lord, help us. Ecclesiastes, Solomon wrote these words. Ah, look at that. Do it, Miss Tina. Solomon said, there is an appointed time for everything. Somebody say everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. The first addition to this series is entitled, Most Things Come to an End. Say that with me. Say, most things come to an end. Holy Spirit, use me today. Make your words, your voice, my voice bigger than the darkness. Mm. The symbolism today is, a, is outrageous, Lord. We sit in darkness, but the light is on the word. Lead us to the light. Lead us to the light. In Jesus' name. Amen. I need to learn how to accept ending. Hmm. Somebody say that with me. Say, I need, I need to learn how to accept ending. Listen, y'all. See, the, today's sermon is, is, is really... And, and I'm probably going to stay at this tone and you'll understand why because uh, I don't think I'm going to do a whole bunch of harm but you never know. Um, but this sermon is just the introduction, Angie. Just the introduction to this, this series. Listen to me. In it, uh, to get your hearts and minds prepared to go there. We got somewhere to go. So today is to get you shifting, get you getting yourself ready because we've got to go somewhere with this. Somebody say amen. amen. And see, I understand my assignment because God has been dealing with me on it for quite a few weeks. And I listen, y'all, I understand that I need to be sensitive and empathetic with your hearts. Because this subject will stir up some painful emotion. I have to be sensitive to your hearts because listen to this now, I'm teaching already, listen. I got to be sensitive to your hearts because your hearts act as gatekeepers to your mind. Your hearts stand guard over your mind, acting like the bouncer at the club. Maybe some folk catch that better. Determining who can go in, what can go in. And see, if I don't reach your mind, if this word does not reach your mind, you will not change. Because scripture tells us that, that we, we are renewed by what? By, by the changing of our, our minds. And see, the problem is most of the information that you sit in, at your present under, it, it, it does not get to your mind because your heart is standing guard. And see, here's something that I've had to understand, Keon, is this, is that even as a preacher, and this is, this is very true in relationships, so don't miss this if you want to be good at relationships, I, 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 have to, I have to be sensitive to the person's heart because the heart has to be appeased. 
The heart has to be appeased before it steps aside and allow the information to get to where it needs to be. How do you appease the heart? The heart is only appeased when it feels like it's understood. I didn't say agreed with. You Listen, you don't have to agree with me. I just need to know that you understand me. But if that doesn't appear to be an effort to understand, then I'm going to stand guard of my mind. So whenever we're dealing with something that's tender, something that's sensitive, listen, I'm trying to help you. You need to be very careful with your words and your approach because that heart is an effective guardian that will keep you stuck. The information is good. You were there. You said amen. You took notes. And it didn't get beyond your hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I got to be sensitive. I got to understand because this is tough. This is a tough subject to deal with because truth be told, we don't like endings. So I need you to understand something. Even though I'm not on the, I'm, I, I prefer to be on the floor. I prefer to preach down on your level because I always want you to know I'm on your level. I'm not above you. But although I'm up here figuratively, I'm down there with you. I get you. I need you to understand. I understand this. I don't like it either. And I haven't managed them well. Because truth be told, Travis, I didn't realize how how critical they were. But endings are inevitable. See, here's my goal is that by the end of the series, your heart and your mind will accept what the title says. That most things come to an end. And listen, if we throw death into the equation, then we can go further and say all things come to an end. See, the difference between that is that when when, when death brings it to an end, (laughs) death strips you of your choice. But before death shows up and vetoes everything, you have many options on your own. And so since your choosing will determine the outflow of your life, this is something you need to get. As a matter of fact, here's what the Lord told me. And and note takers, write this down. He said this to me. He said, listen, y'all must learn to do well all of the unavoidable things. Did y'all get that? It is critical that you learn to do well all the things that are unavoidable. The Bible tells us several things that are unavoidable. Jesus said offense, didn't he? He said it's inevitable for offense to come. It's coming. It's coming. And so since it's coming, you need to know how to handle it well. He says, not only that, he says, affliction, many other afflictions of the righteous, suffering is, 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 is unavoidable. Death is unavoidable. How should I handle that? We don't, we don't weep like those who have no hope. God told us how to handle all of the unavoidable things. And I'm here to tell you another one to add to the list. Endings. And see, the gist of this message is this. Here's why you got to learn how to handle the unavoidable thing. It's because you and I are charged with whatever we go through to try to give, not try to achieve the glory of God. Come on, breathe in with me because I got to get you to. of glory. Keep on playing the language. No matter what I go through, Thomas, yes, I'm still supposed to make God yes, sir. 
God would handle it. He's already told me. I might have surprised me, but it didn't surprise him. He said, there was nothing new under the sun. I give you the formula for how to handle everything. He said, no matter what you go through, you still have to remember that you are representing me in the earth. Don't let that cause you to make me look bad. So if it is unavoidable, God said, you better have learned how to handle it because the unavoidable things can shake you to your core. Offense can shake you to your core. Suffering can shake you to your core. Endings can shake you to your core. Core, but God says, I have crowned you with glory. I have given you the responsibility and the authority for glory. You have replaced the enemy. Glory is your job, it's our job now. Simply stated, is my behavior making him look good? I know this is crazy. I know I wasn't expecting this, but is my, is my reaction or my response to the thing, am I making him look good? Glory is not something I can take off, Charles. I can't take it off. If I'm going to be a son of God and watch this, listen, 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 and be able to make it through the moment. Glory shields me. Glory brings me through a thing. Watch this. With a testimony and not triggers. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of coming through stuff with triggers. Stuff that snatches me back into my past. Where my testimony gives me the courage to move forward. My testimony said, if he did it then, he'll do it now. If he did it back then, he'll do it again. If he did it over there, he'll do it again. Glory. When glory is my obsession, it keeps me from incubating the trauma. Am I making any sense? Huh. I gotta, it's, it's, it's about glory. It's about the glory. Somebody say it's about the glory. It is. It is. It is. How, how many things are about the glory? Pastor, all of them. My rising up to my laying down. God was so serious. Sean, see, God was so serious about exodus that he dedicated a whole book in the Bible about it. Called Exodus. It is amazing how God set this thing up. Watch this. The, 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 the first book of the Bible, let's make sure y'all still know your Bible because y'all been out of the pandemic. The first book of the Bible is what? Genesis. Genesis means beginnings. And the very next book of the Bible is Exodus, which means a way out. Look how God is dealing with us in his introduction to us. He's introducing us to himself through the word of God. And the first thing he talks, he talks about is Genesis. Then right after the Exodus, in other words, God says, listen, and all that you do, you might want to make sure you understand beginnings. You better recognize, you better recognize you better recognize beginnings. And right after you do that, you better recognize endings. If you're going to be a champion of glory, you got to recognize beginnings. So you quit missing your moments. And endings. So you can stop dragging dead things. 
Preach, Wendell Jones. All of this for the protection of glory. Am I moving in his reputation? Am I making God look good? I see. <laughs> Oftentimes, help me explain that, Holy Spirit. All. Everything that we eat has a natural shelf life. It has a time in which naturally it is opposed to spoil. Watch this. Now listen to this. It's as a natural time for it to spoil after we take its life or we pull it up from its life source. Y'all with me? At the time in which we kill the cow, take his life, or pull the tomato up out of the ground. In fact, what you are consuming is dead. It's dead. And so what happened, what should happen naturally is spoilage. It be, listen to this. It, be, it should begin to spoil because dead things attract bacteria. Hmm. See, 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 when it's living, it has a natural God-given defense against bacteria. But dead things can't fight for itself. So bacteria seeks out what has died. And so to extend the shelf life of what we consume, the food industry adds what we call preservative. It should have died. It should have been spoiled by now. But they sprinkle preservatives on it to extend the life. Listen, 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 listen. It doesn't revive it. It's still dead. It just holds off the bacteria so that it doesn't look and smell dead. Mm. It still has the appearance of healthiness. Yeah, oh, there's so much in that in me. But in the effort to extend our food beyond its normal shelf life and adding preservatives, it puts us in harm's way because most preservatives have been linked to causing cancer. Look at the irony of that. To keep something from dying on the outside of you, they add something that once you consume might begin to kill you. That's what we do with things that should have ended. They have run their course. They have served their purpose. And since we don't know how to transition with glory, we dress it up to make it look like it's still alive. We dress it up so that others can't recognize the stench of it all. And we're still consumers of it, and it's killing us on the inside. How we handle things. That should have died. Listen to me. <laughs> For there to be anything new 
What must happen to the old? The old has to die. Didn't God tell us that? He says, the old, the old man is passing away. Behold, all things are becoming new. The part that, that, that shows God's sensitivity to our struggles is that he didn't say the old things passed away and then all things become new. He gave us process because he knows that, 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 that when the old thing starts to die, all of a sudden we all certified in CPR. We just, we just doing chest compressions. <clears throat> Trying to bring it back to life just to extend it just a little bit longer. Maybe watch this. Maybe for the image. Watch this. Maybe for my identity. Because my identity is in this thing. What I'm going to do if this dies? Who I'm going to be if this dies? Hmm. Old things have to die. And let me say this before somebody pick up the phone or text somebody today and tell them it's over. I, this, this ain't this. Because I know y'all and I know y'all streaming. Pastor said. That whole pastor said thing that got me in so many. So, so in the middle of so much stuff. And some of y'all be lying. Pastor ain't say that. This does not naturally mean, listen, it does not naturally mean that the relationship is over. It just might mean some behaviors within the relationship have to die because those behaviors are now acting like the preservatives and they're causing what, what, what are they doing, Sean? It's killing it. So you got to recognize what, you know, I, I, I want this to live, but that got to. Come on, come on, help, 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 help me preach this thing. Let's, let's say it one more time. I want this to live, but that got to. There are endings that must happen. Maturity. Everybody wants to mature, right? Maturity requires that you turn your back on the old you. It does, it does, it does. It does for you to, for you to grow up. Listen, let me, let me just make it real, real simple. Uh, you can't keep acting like you in your 20s. They, they, they ain't coming back. They're not coming back. That particular shape ain't coming back. You better learn how to be 40 and fine instead of trying to be 21 again. You better learn. Now at this age, you don't have um, as much time to, 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 to recoup as you did in your 20s. At this age, folks are not as forgiving because they expect you to know better now than you did. At, 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 at this age, you shouldn't be trying to find somebody to date, to love, to sleep with. In that age, oh, because it will not give you your youth back. It'll just give you a bad name. It will mess up your glory. Are y'all listening? Wisdom requires that you shun the old information. I know better. So I can't commingle the old with the new. Are y'all listening? Stuff has to die. Hmm. If it's proven to not give God glory, quit trying. I want to quit trying to inward rig it. Y'all, 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 y'all got me right. 
Look at somebody and say, let it die. Remember, this is all about glory. It's all about glory. <laughs> I've, I've, in, in, in these nearly 14 years of, of, of CYM and, and 20 some odd years of preaching, I've, I've, I've watched um, I watch people in church, in this church and in others, feel called by God to do something else. And, and, and in their experience and their personal experiences, exits were always painful. So if they feel like they need to go, they have to create pain. They have to throw batches over their shoulders and watch things burn because that's what they were used to experiencing. But what's also been amazing to me, the pattern that I've witnessed, is that even in many of those cases, God, I have to watch them from the sideline, sidelines flounder because God never told them to leave the church. He told them to stop their current duties. Watch this. There was time to end something within the ministry so that you could make room for something else you had to do, but you were never asked to leave your life source. They became the tomato that had been plucked up. And for a minute, the tomato looks red and ripe. But before you reckon and before you realize it, you can see evidence that the life source has. If it was the place that made your baby leap, why would you? See, sometimes God is telling y'all to go do something else and be fed. It's hard to work when you're hungry. Am I making sense? Many things that God intended to be great fail because the person through which he's working through left their source of feeding. Am I making sense? We've got to understand how this stuff works. Now watch, because we haven't handled our endings well. I've, I've watched people who have who had bad experiences at a church and then they decided to turn on all churches. Where's the glory in that? I've watched women who had a bad experience with a man now paint all men with the same brush. Where's the glory? And I've watched men have a bad experience with a woman. And now you are typecasting all women. I've watched people have a bad experience with one race. And now you're casting a shadow on an entire people. My question is, where is the glory in that? There is none, because the moment you do that, you have just made your world. Are y'all listening? And what if God wanted to use you in that world that you now run from? Here's something I've learned about God. Most of your wounds were to sensitize you to the need of a teacher in the area that you got hurt in. Did y'all get that? Most of your wounds were allowed by God to make you sensitive to the needs of a leader, a teacher, who understands how those over there feel. Am I making sense? You want, you want, you want Bible for that? We don't have a high priest who has not been touched by the feelings of our infirmities. What is, well, how does that relate? Jesus could have sat in heaven and healed us. But he said, let me go feel what they feel. He said, so that way when I call them in the midnight hour, it doesn't sound like the voice of a stranger. You can't tell God you don't understand. Even though we foolishly do, you can't tell Jesus, but you don't feel what I feel. You can't say that. That's right. That's right. He said, you don't believe me? I got the wounds to show. When he came up for the, from the grave, he didn't have the wounds healed. Why? Because he needed them for credibility in his ministry. 
Oh, y'all missed that. I've been touched by what you've gone through. And so to handle our endings well, Dr. Henry Cloud said we need to learn to master these three things. We need to learn how to master discernment, courage, and skill. Discernment, courage, and skill. Here's the sermon. The sermon is you have to recognize the difference between what is and what should be. Get that now. What is and what should be. That's all the sermon is. People try to make it real spooky, try to act like a certain amount of people have it. That's crazy. That, that's, that's us and I need to be superior. That's us and I need to feel better than you because we won't heal the spot that got us feeling less than you. But all the sermon is is that I recognize that what is ain't what should be. There's a disconnect that I can't ignore. Something is out of order. And when things remain out of order, they produce pain. So the quicker you are at recognizing that, the quicker that you are at able to being able to do something. And then courage comes in. Courage is preparing your heart for confrontation. See, some of y'all recognize when stuff has changed. But you ain't went to the wizard to get courage. Because you still determine I'm not going to confront it. I'm not going to say something about it. I'm not going to raise my hand and go, wait a minute. Something's off. Wait a minute. That's, that's not right. Wait a minute. That doesn't look like glory. That doesn't look like how God would handle a thing. And then the last is skill. Skill is how to make the adjustment once the sermon has told me what's up. Because it still ain't enough to see it. It still ain't enough to just talk about it. Something has to change. Are y'all with me? Something needs to be different. Or we're going to continue on this downward. This downward slope. In Ecclesiastes 3, Solomon. Y'all know Solomon as being the wisest man that has ever lived. He he, in those eight verses, he begins to talk to us. Really, go back and look at it. It's, it's, uh, put it back up there for me real quick, Tina, just the, the whole thing. You, you see he's talking about beginnings and endings, beginnings and endings, beginnings and endings. But the way that he connects every one of these verses is that word. Y'all, do y'all see the word that every verse has in common? What is it? Time. And I caught that. I was like, because, you know, I don't, I don't take the Bible for granted when it's translated. Just because, you know, you know, Rube, sometimes, you know, when we read, man, it, it, it ain't really what they were saying. It's just how they got it translated. So you got to dig in behind it. And I said, what does this word time mean? Watch this. The root word in there meant this. A fading away. A fading away. Please catch this. What God is telling us, Travis, is that everything is fading away. The moment somebody is born, Danielle, they begin the death process. Fading away. The moment something is created, the fading process begins. I said, God, why, what, what do you want us to really get out of that? He said, he posed the question to him. He said, how would you all treat things if you knew it was fading away? 
He said, every, 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 every relationship, every person that you have the audacity to love, guess what they're doing? Fading away. I'm standing up here being your pastor. Some of you may enjoy what I do, but how much more seriously would you take the message if you knew I was fading away? Today, when I woke up, I was one step closer to my appointed time. The Bible says there is an appointed time for all. That means everybody got to die. How differently would you approach if God is trying to tell you every opportunity? Now you guys get a chance to teach the marriage class. God said, listen, a marriage and Shaughnessy, that's fading away. You get a chance to lead us in worship today. Listen, don't come with you, just being slack about it because this is Quit worrying about what people think about you. Give your whole in this moment because, listen, you may not have tomorrow because everything is. You scared to tell somebody you love you. They, they may not be here tomorrow because that person right there is fading away. How would you do life differently? How much easier would it be for you to have the necessary conversations if you realize my opportunities are Wait. How quicker would you be to be willing to check somebody that you love? Because you're so worried about people not liking you. But listen, you are fading away. I got to come talk to you now. We and everything. Watch this. Because listen. Sin made us subject to time. It was never God's intention for us to die. But sin came into the picture, and now everything dies. And so now we are subject to time. No wonder Solomon's daddy said, he told the Lord, teach me to number my days. That's somebody that's serious. That's somebody going, whoo, I've been around 30,172 days. What a blessing. Because you realize that life is nothing but a vapor. You realize that it was only by the grace of God that I'm here. You realize that God has given me yet another chance. But this thing, this, this thing that I have, this opportunity that I have, it is doing what? How many things have you blown already? Because you didn't appreciate the fact that there was a time for it. How many funerals have you gone to and you watch somebody completely show out? And you know by now they're showing out because they didn't take advantage of. It's, 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 the one, it's the one that's crying and weeping quietly, knew they put their time. But it's the one that's showing out, that realizes that this thing has come to an It's fading away. Praise thing. How would y'all sing next Sunday if you realize this might be it? How will, you, how will you worship next Sunday? This might be it. See, God said through David, watch this, to, 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 to teach me the number of my days, not to make us anxious, but to make us diligent. He, he uses that word often. He said, come on, come on, get on the good foot. Come on. Come on, make this thing happen. Come on. And see, if you understood this, you'll start dealing with all your insecurities. See, if you grab this, you'll, want to, you'll, you'll embrace the processes to heal. Because you're like, man, I, I can't let this insecurity slow me down because my days are fading away. I can't, I can't let what, I, what people think about me stop me because my days are fading away. I, I can't get caught up in this and caught up in that because my time is fading away. I don't know when my clock expires. All I know is there is an appointed time and God hadn't told me. So today I'm going to operate like this might be it. How would you live? You can ask 
to understand how God said we ought to have a Zoe life. And we understood that this might be it. This might be it. See, if you understood that, then you always give God something in excellence. Because right now, most of us think we got another shot at it. I'll I'll do better next time. I'm tired today, shoot. They're going to get what they get today. But if you remember that this might be it, and you are responsible for glory. Was my, did my last moment when I stand before God, can I stand there with confidence? My last moment made you look good. My last moment. If anybody was watching me, they saw a glimpse of God. If anybody was watching, they saw what happens to a man or a woman who's a they saw the resiliency in my soul. They saw that I housed the resurrected because it looked like I should have stayed down, but I wouldn't stay down for the count. As a matter of fact, I'll fall down seven times and get right back up and try that thing again. And act like those last seven times didn't even happen. Mm. Everything comes to an end. We don't have time to go through all eight verses. We're going to do all eight verses on Wednesday, but I just want to give you about three of them, and I'm going to let you out of here. Verse one. There is an appointed time for everything. Translated meaning there is a season. There's a season, y'all. For everything. By now, you've gone through enough seasons that you can agree with me that seasons begin and end. They're not in perpetuity. Spring has to do all they can do in spring. Summer going to have to do all they can get done in summer. Because winter is coming. Everything comes to an end. And so in numbering my days, I, 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 I need, listen, 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 please hear this. I need to create as much glory as possible with this, whatever your this is. Because I'm tired of fumbling my this is. Because I owe him some glory. This thing ain't forever. It's not. The opportunity to be a blessing, the opportunity to put your gift on display, this will not last forever. Been having a heart-to-heart talks with Todd about the changes that our health has brought on. And we had to have the heart-to-heart, and I said, there are some things about you that you hate that has But I'm so amazed at how you're producing glory in it. I hear that you haven't silenced yourself. And I'm watching you inspire. Watch this healthy people as they watch you do battle and win, by the way. And I'm watching. We had a conversation about her post, and she's like, you know, I hope, you know, it doesn't offend anybody. Yeah, but this thing keeps me going. I told you a few minutes ago, glory shields me. And glory gets me through. So watch this. When you become committed to glory, you are proving to God that he has a good investment over here. <laughs> Look, you you wanna you wanna take care of me because I'm I'm a good investment. 
I'm, I'm not somebody that's taking your air and just using it for granted. I'm not someone taking your gifts and using it for granted. I'm not someone that's taking life for granted. I'm putting myself through the blenders of life. I'm putting myself through the processes of life. I'm a good investment over here. You might want to keep me around. You might want to fight for me because I'm a good thing in the kingdom. Because here's the deal. I understand that I was created for glory. And God, I'm obsessed with pursuing it. God, even when my heart is shattered in a million pieces, I start wanting to share a million pieces so somebody else won't have to go through what I went through. I'm learning how whatever I go through, I got to find a way to bless the Lord. Where folks are looking at you crazy like, how in the world are you still doing what you do? Because I've become obsessed with glory. Does that mean your heart doesn't know? Oh, that means I wrestle with depression. That means my issues pop up. That means my insecurities flare up, but they won't drown out my need to see glory. Did I make you proud today? <laughs> Woo! Did, I, did I do something that, 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 that made you want to stand up on your feet, God? I remember the scene in the Bible. The Bible says that, 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 that when, when they were stoning Stephen, Y'all remember that scene in the Bible? The Bible said as they were stoning Stephen, what did Jesus do? The Bible says he stood up. And but, he, but here's the part that gets me. If you read back earlier in your Bible, the father told him, sit down. <laughs> what Stephen did was so outrageous and full of glory that the Christ who had been commanded to sit until I make your enemies your footstool. He saw Stephen produce glory in his death. He said, that's worthy of a standing ovation. That's glory. My enemy's my footstool because even in his dying, he still makes me look. There's a season, Shahara. So when folks try to talk you out of a thing and tell you you're doing too much and you can't do this, you don't understand. I don't know how much time I got. All I know is I got an assignment. I don't know how much time I got. All I know is I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock and I will be graded after this. I'll be graded after this. And so I want to make sure that when I stand before my professor, he looks at my stuff and say, well done. As a matter of fact, y'all who, who want to turn me away or shut me up and shut me down, y'all won't even be in the room. So, so I cannot, listen, listen, I cannot be so obsessed with your well done down here that I sacrifice the well done up there. Somebody better hear me. Somebody better hear me. Jesus. Verse 2. A time to give birth. And a time to die. Listen. Listen, parents, give birth a, a beginning, your child, your bloodline, that you have limited time to impart instructions, wisdom, and guidance toward their righteousness. Then you die. Their birth your death. God is saying, whatever's been assigned to you, you have a limited amount of time. To some of the hardest people that we have, have had to release in death is people who were contributing so much. But the reality of it is, they graded out well. They graded out well. See, what you and I have to get to is be able to say at the end of our days, like Paul said, I fought a good fight and I finished my course. There are so many people that if you ask them right now because they're in some type of fight, they'll tell you, I'm fighting a good fight. That ain't even what you graded on. You graded on, I finished my course. Just because you fought to stay alive, did you do the work that you were called to? Because like Nehemiah, sometimes you got to work with a hammer in one hand and a sword in another. 
Nehemiah had to build Reuben with one hand and fight off the enemy with the other. See, most of the time we want to stop building so we can go fight. God said, that ain't how this works. You got you to do both. But you don't, but, you, but Pastor Jones, you don't understand my life. Come on now. Uh, you, <laughs> scripture says such, what you're going through is common to men. It's just painful to you. But there are others that are do, enduring far worse than you. Verse 8, then we're going to get them out of here. See? Look at that first line. Y'all read that one for me. A time. <sighs> we're going to end on this one because this one going this one gonna sting a little bit. This is God bringing us back to the nature of our relationship and the cycle we go through in them. There is a time to love, intimacy, connection, connectivity. We're tied at the hip. But isn't it amazing how that same relationship can then shift? See, that, that word hate is really not speaking to the emotion that you think. That word hate, if you look it up, really means enemy. Isn't it amazing how somebody can start out as a lover? But somewhere along the way, they become an enemy. So watch this, listen. God is saying, remember discernment. I got to see when it ain't what it should be. You got to recognize when the shift has come. And what used to be a loving relationship, the, the, the description of an enemy is somebody who has now become hostile. You have to recognize. And see, sometimes you see it and you start trying to sprinkle preservatives. And God is saying, here's what I need you to see, son, daughter. That this part of the relationship has ended. Does not, does not mean that there's not going to be some degree of relationship. But when somebody's heart can now treat you hostile. I'm not talking about moments. I'm talking about consistent patterns of hostility. You have to be within yourself enough to recognize that what I thought we, or, or even what we did have, that season has come to an end. And so now watch this. Listen, because what, what's, what's, the, what's the main thing? Glory. Because what happens here is when one thing, when a relationship once was loving that is now hostile, it becomes very tempting for you to say, forget God. Come get these hands. Because you start recalling all that you've done. That's why God told us in Corinthians that don't keep score. He's trying to warn you. You keep in score, go, you say like I feel it. Keep in score, going to piss you off later. Because when you feel like you're being treated beneath your contributions. I've given so much to this. And this is what this comes to. You can treat me like this now after all I've done for you. And heaven is going, Shh, glory. Don't forget the glory. You be like, God, I'll be back. But he's saying, Listen, but, but here's the problem with that, Travis. Watch this. If I handle it wrong, it 
it doesn't preserve the relationship. The preservatives preserve the pain. It just stretches out the pain. Because you're sitting somewhere going, what the? I can't believe. What's wrong with me? You know, forgot all about your calling. What's wrong with me? Why, God, every time I get here, every time, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of men. I'm sick of women. I'm sick of the church. I'm stretching. I'm preserving the pain. And God says, let me teach you how to go through that ending and still act like me. They've de- Listen, they've decided to act like an enemy. You have to decide to act like God. See, that's making some of y'all itch right there, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you like where they show out, that's where we show out. Huh? Huh? Quit acting like everybody redeemed from that. Quit playing, I know. I remember telling somebody one time, don't let the oil and Bible fool you. But I've had to learn that in order for God to keep his investment, I have to keep acting like his investment. Even if it makes me look weak to you. Even if I'm getting outside pressure that I need to do something when I have found the scripture that tells me that even when they, even if a love, so think about the swinging of that pendulum. That's why it's so painful from love to enemy. Even if they call themselves an enemy, God said, <coughs> love your enemy. I didn't know it was going to be somebody who used to tell me they love me. I thought it was just going to be somebody who didn't like me from jump. But the reality of it is, is most of your enemies were once friends. Am I making sense? And then life brought part of their character out. That they weren't ready to deal with. And here you are being a standard. Watch, watch this. Here you are still trying to be a good friend. Because a good, a good friend go, mm-mm, 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 that ain't right. That ain't right. Most enemies were made as a result of your correction. Oh, did y'all hear that? Most people become hostile because you dared to think you had the right to correct them. But Jesus said, you know, if I, cor- if I can't correct you, you're not mine. If I, correct, if I can't correct you, you're not my friend. If I can't correct you, you're not my spouse. If I can't correct you, you're not my leader. If I can't correct you, we, ain't, we must not be connected. Because correction is love. Come on. It's warm here. Let me let y'all go. Can we put the takeaway up to you? We got a couple of weeks to go, y'all. And I need you to meditate on this thing. I'm going to send you out the table talk. Please don't waste my gift and time. I need you to talk through this stuff. I promise you, I'm going to produce sermons as if my time is almost up. I need, I'm, and that's not bragging. That's that, that that ain't nothing to brag. About. That's just discipline. That's all it is. Ain't nothing special. I ain't saying I'm special. I'm just saying that's just discipline. But you got to talk yourself through it. Takeaway says, 
we must learn to handle all unavoidable things well so that we don't sacrifice the glory of God assigned to our lives. Endings are unavoidable and necessary for advancement. Can't go forward unless the old thing ends. Through discernment, courage, and skill, I broke that down to learning and application. We will move forward through every ending, still representing God well. I might have a limp, but I'll still have glory. I might have to cry myself to sleep, but I didn't sacrifice glory. I might have that gut-wrenching feeling in the pit of my stomach that we all hate and want to avoid. But I still won't surrender producing glory. You might act up. You might become my enemy. Still called to love you. I'll do good by you. You may not have as much access because I need to guard my heart now since you're acting hostile. God covers it all. God Because I'm understanding that I'm just seeing a demonstration of your inner brokenness. And me retaliating doesn't fix it. It just aggravates it more. Come on, stand, y'all. Lord, help us to no longer miss our beginnings when you're doing something new. Help us to no longer miss our ending when it's time to let it go. Hmm. I was listening as I was preparing this to as soon as I stop worrying. Worrying how the story ends. I let go. See, that right there hits me every time. Because it's, it's, see, I'm telling you, I understand you. It's that letting go. Because you're like, ah, maybe, maybe if I just try it this way. Maybe if I just come at it this way. Maybe if I just, maybe I should have, well, if I had a say, if I had a been, if I had a done. See, letting go ain't you giving up. Because you're not letting go for it to do nothing like here. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than me. Let it go, y'all. Whatever the Holy Spirit is showing you now, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. It has ended. And you don't know what God will do next. He's a resurrected, so he can bring us back. Or he can make things new. All you know is that Time to let go of your old life. If you're streaming, it's time to let go of your old life. Until you let it go, you won't be able to walk in the new one. Salvation is being offered now. If you're in here with us and you're ready to give Christ your life, just raise your hand in the air for me.
info that we are who I am. Lord, Lord, help me without you. when things start happening I stop looking at back then and I let go and I let I let go so let go and let go let go on that song. We're not going to do our benediction song. This is the time, y'all. I think we should end it on that. Father, we thank you. Take us through this tender time. Be the physician, the good physician that you are. Cut away what needs to be cut away. Bandage us up and send us back out into the world. We thank you, Master, for your timeliness. Your word proves you care. In Jesus' name, I love y'all so much.